On a rainy night, Mike Enslin gets out of his car and rushes to a motel, all soaked. He seems to be in a hurry. Mike is the author of cheesy horror tour guide books. He travels from city to city, staying at supposedly haunted places, and then writes a summary of them for his book. In this instance, he meets the motel owner and inquires about the most haunted room. Initially, the latter hesitates, but then he assigns him a key to room 14. Mike takes it and immediately checks into his room. By the looks on his face, it is evident that he doesn't believe in the supernatural. For the first few minutes, Mike uses his equipment to detect anything unusual in the room. However, when he doesn't find anything, he gets bored and falls asleep. The next morning, he wakes up early and leaves. He then goes to a bookstore for his book signing event. A few people are in attendance, and Mike talks about paranormal activities. He presents his view of not believing in ghostly activities and all the stuff being just fantasy. He should probably get someone else to do his marketing. As he signs the books for his readers, a young girl comes to him with a very old book of his. It is revealed that Mike used to write emotional stories before he became a paranormal writer. The girl tells him that she was genuinely touched by the book because it seemed too authentic, especially the part about the relationship between father and daughter. She then asks if that really happened. Mike says no, but his expression suggests otherwise. After the book event, Mike heads back to his home in Los Angeles. He immediately goes to the beach to enjoy surfing. As he is riding the waves, a helicopter passes above him with a banner. Mike tries to read it, but just then he is swept away by a massive wave. Mike chokes on the seawater, but somehow manages to survive. After he gets up, he goes to a post office and picks up his mail. As he goes through it, a postcard catches his eye. It is a certain Dolphin Hotels card, which says, Don't Enter 1408 on the back. Mike is instantly intrigued by this, so he calls the said hotel for information about room 1408. However, the receptionist mentions that the room is unavailable for any dates. He suggests that Mike book other rooms, but our protagonist is not one who gives up easily. Hence, he starts looking up room 1408 of Dolphin Hotel on the internet. Shockingly, Mike learns that some people committed the unthinkable in that room, so it has been closed for years. In the next scene, Mike calls his publisher Sam to ask about the hotel, and the latter mentions that there is a law that allows him to file a lawsuit if they don't give him the room that is vacant. Next, Mike arrives in New York and takes a cab to the Dolphin Hotel. He inspects the place meticulously, but notices nothing creepy about it. After a while, a woman at the reception enters his details. When Mike says that he wants to book room 1408, the woman gets shocked and immediately sends him to the manager Gerald's office. At his office, Gerald asks Mike how long he wants to stay in that room. The latter replies he wants to stay overnight, but Gerald reveals that no one has lasted there for more than an hour. He also brings up the fact that 56 people have died in that room so far. After this, Gerald gives Mike his diary with all the information about the deaths, saying he cannot stay in that room. However, our stubborn protagonist is not willing to give up on the room so easily. He sees it as the perfect opportunity to make good content for his new book. Mike keeps insisting that he won't leave until he gets what he wants, and in the end, Gerald hesitantly hands him the key to room 1408. The two then take an elevator to the 14th floor. Soon, the elevator dings, and they part ways. Mike walks through the hallway, reading the diary given by Gerald. At first, everything seems normal as he sees a maid passing by. However, something seems eerily unsettling. Mike continues to 1408 and unlocks the room. He turns on the lights and shuts the door. He then takes out a tape recorder and starts recording his voice as he walks around the room. Mike describes the place in detail, saying it is much more boring than he had expected. But right then, he is startled by a song that begins playing on the radio. When Mike turns around, he sees two chocolates placed on his pillow, and he eats one of them. He hears some noises and suspects that somebody is in the room. After turning off the music, Mike gets excited, thinking he has finally found something to write about. But he still doesn't realize that something is off with the place. Mike believes that the hotel staff are simply trying to scare him away. Soon, the room starts heating automatically. He tries lowering the thermostat down, but it keeps getting hotter. When the condition becomes unbearable, Mike calls the hotel operator, asking for a mechanic to fix the issue. After he hangs up, he checks the room with UV lights and eerily finds bloodstains everywhere. Soon, a mechanic knocks on the door and Mike excitedly greets him. However, the man refuses to enter the room, saying he fears for his life. Instead, he guides Mike on how to repair the thermostat himself. The latter follows the instructions and manages to bring the temperature down, but when he turns around to thank the mechanic, there is no one there. All of a sudden, the radio turns on again, and a song starts playing loudly. The clock on the radio automatically sets for a timer of 60 minutes. A high-pitched tingling sound also starts playing, and Mike loses his hearing for a while. He frantically looks out of the window, and although there is a lot of traffic, he can't hear anything other than the tingling voice. Just then, the window closes 
bruises on its own, crushing his hand. Mike screams in pain as he goes to the bathroom to clean his wound, but the faucet's water changes to boiling immediately and burns his hands. Back in the room, Mike is putting a bandage on his hand when the song We've Only Just Begun starts playing. Enraged, he disconnects the radio from the outlet, but the timer is still running. At this point, Mike finally realizes that he is in trouble, so he gathers all his stuff and tries getting out of the room. But to his bad luck, the key breaks in half. The doorknob also falls off. Scared, Mike tries kicking the door open, but to no avail. He then rushes to the window, crying for help, and spots a man in the adjacent building. Mike screams to grab his attention, but soon realizes that it is his own reflection. Just then, a creepy figure approaches his mirrored self with a knife and kills him. When Mike turns around, he sees the same entity behind him, too. When I saw this movie in theaters, this part made me pee a little. He drops to the floor and closes his eyes, waiting for his demise. But when he regains his senses, the entity is nowhere to be seen. This worries Mike, and now he is convinced that he is hallucinating. As he searches for answers, he suddenly remembers that the hotel manager had given him booze before coming to the room. He suspects that it was drugged, and that's why he's been seeing things. He also thinks that the chocolate he ate earlier was laced with something. Suddenly, the TV in the room starts showing a video of Mike and his family. He is playing with his ex-wife Lily and their daughter Katie. Mike gets emotional as he walks towards the TV. He tries to feel his daughter's face on the screen, but the TV abruptly shuts down. Mike then starts hearing a baby cry next door. He assumes there must be a woman with the baby, and he bangs the wall, requesting for help. Unfortunately, this only aggravates the situation, as the voice of the baby crying gets louder, deafening Mike. In a state of panic, he throws a chair at the wall, finally making the sound go away. But then, something creepy happens. Mike notices blood dripping from the cracked wall, almost as if he hit an actual person. In the next scene, Mike inspects the floor plan and learns that there are several rooms next to his. What, in a hotel? You're kidding me. Since the door is jammed, he decides to climb out the window and call for help. Mike slowly steps out and walks onto the ledge of the building. However, as he reaches a bit further, he hauntingly learns that the hotel doesn't contain any other rooms except 1408. Oh, you're kidding me. Panicked, he changes direction and starts heading back to his room. But on the way, a ghastly woman appears next to him, causing him to nearly fall. Mike somehow holds on, and he notices the woman committing the unthinkable from the ledge. He then climbs back inside, after which the window shuts closed automatically. When Mike inspects the floor plan again, he learns that it is now changed completely. Only his room is shown, with the rest of the hotel blacked out. To add to the mystery, Mike notices that room 1408 has changed in appearance. The door and windows are now completely blocked by concrete walls. Mike cannot believe that this is happening to him, so he listens to his earlier recording to check his sanity. To his horror, the recording also says that the room is haunted. Confused and not knowing what to do, Mike looks through his bag and finds a laptop. He connects to a wireless network and calls Lily through a video chat. He nervously tells her that he is trapped in a weird place and asks her to call the cops to Dolphin Hotel Room 1408. But as he is giving her more information, the sprinklers suddenly activate and spray water all over the room. This unfortunately destroys the laptop, as well as all the other electronics in the room. After Mike turns off the sprinklers, the room starts freezing, and it gets extremely cold there. He tries burning different stuff in the room to keep himself warm. Sometime later, as Mike is on the verge of death, he gets a call on his laptop, which has miraculously repaired itself. Lily is on the other end, and she mentions that the cops are at the hotel room 1408. However, she reveals that the room is empty. Just then, the laptop glitches, and a supernatural Mike begins speaking to his ex-wife through the call. He asks Lily to come to room 1408, presumably to trap her. The real Mike tries his best to stop his ex-wife from coming, but his voice cannot be heard. Suddenly, everything starts to rumble. All items in the room break, the wall cracks, and there's debris all around. It starts raining. Mike hits a painting of a ship, and water begins pouring inside the room. Mike is now drowning, fighting for his life, but after a bit of struggling, he sees a light above him and swims toward it. As he reaches the surface, he shockingly finds himself on the beach from earlier. A helicopter soon passes by, and this time he is able to read the banner. It says, to get great life insurance, call XXX1408. When Mike wakes up sometime later, he finds himself in a hospital in LA. His ex-wife Lily is by his side, trying to comfort him. Mike wastes no time and explains about the incidents of Dolphin Hotel 1408. However, Lily says that she hasn't heard of that hotel. Some days later, Mike starts living a normal life with Lily. They have decided to give their relationship one more try. One night, during dinner, Mike seems composed, but he suddenly sees a waitress who looks exactly like the ghost from room 1408. Mike is startled, but when he looks at her again, he realizes
realizes he was just hallucinating. To keep himself distracted, Mike starts writing about his experience of room 1408. Soon, he completes his manuscript and decides to print it. Later, he goes to the post office to mail it to his publisher in New York. The man at the counter turns towards him, saying they are closed for today. Mike becomes shocked when he sees his face. He remembers him as the same bellboy at the Dolphin Hotel who offered to take his bags. Suddenly, all the people in the post office start destroying the room, and Mike finds himself in 1408 once again. This is when he realizes that the past week was simply a dream, as he is still trapped. To make matters worse, the room is now in complete ruins. As Mike shouts for help, his daughter arrives in the room. She calls him daddy and asks for help. Mike knows that he is hallucinating again, but he cannot resist himself from hugging her. Here, it is revealed that Katie died some years ago due to cancer, and this is the reason Mike and Lily drifted apart. Back in the room, he tells Katie that they will live together as a family, and no one will take her away. But right then, the little girl dies in his arms. Mike cries, saying you can't take her twice. All of a sudden, loud music plays on the radio, and Katie's body shatters into concrete debris. Mike goes crazy and starts breaking and throwing stuff. As the music keeps on playing, we notice that the timer on the radio is about to end. In the next scene, the clock hits zero, and he finds himself in the original room 1408. It is fully furnished, and nothing appears to be broken. The clock has also reset to another one-hour timer, indicating that Mike has been trapped in an endless loop. Suddenly, the telephone rings, and Mike immediately picks it up. He asks, why didn't you kill me? To which, the operator replies that he can choose to relive that hour again and again, or end his life. At the same time, Mike notices the grave of himself and his daughter Katie. He realizes that the room is forcing him to commit the unthinkable, just like all the previous occupants. Meanwhile, the operator on the phone asks if he is ready to check out or not. Mike hesitates for a while and then says no. In response, the operator mentions that his wife will be there soon and hangs up. Hearing this, Mike panics and decides to end it all. He sees a bottle of bourbon given by the manager, which is now full. Acting quickly, he makes a Molotov out of it, lights it on fire, and then throws it against the wall. Before long, the fire alarm goes off and everyone in the hotel panics. Lily, who has just arrived at the hotel, tells the police that Mike is inside room 1408 on the 14th floor. Meanwhile, Mike sits calmly in his room, smoking a cigarette. As the place burns down in flames, he laughs maniacally, content that the room is finally going to be destroyed. The scene then cuts to Mike's funeral, revealing that he did not survive. Lily gives a heartfelt speech, saying Katie and Mike are finally together now. After the ceremony ends, Gerald, the manager at Dolphin Hotel, approaches Lily with Mike's belongings in a box. However, she refuses to take them, saying she wants to move on now. After a while, as Gerald is back in his car, he finds a tape recorder amongst Mike's belongings. When he plays it, he hears the haunting final moments of Mike, along with the screams of Katie. Suddenly, Gerald sees the little girl in the mirror, and when he turns back, he notices a completely burnt Mike. Terrified, Gerald places the tape recorder back in the box and drives off. In the final scene, we see the spirit of Mike, still trapped in room 1408. As he wanders around, he hears Katie calling him daddy from nearby. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.